Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at Ion's latest and greatest case. This is the Ion's Keshho ATX RGB gaming case. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so this is a new case from Ion's. This is the Kesho, which uh, I think means crystal, I think, in uh, Japanese, possibly. I'll have to look that up and validate that. But this is a new ATX gaming case from them. Retails at the moment at around about £37.95 on the PCGamingCases.co.uk website, which is uh, part of the Ion's branding. Actually, a very, very nice little case. Lots of features, tons of room in there. Comes included with a ton of RGB lighting, which is all controllable, and also comes with other options. So if you want to add other things, such as a 360mm radiator, a 240mm rad, big graphics cards, all those kinds of things, this should tick all the boxes. So in today's video, we'll go through, do a quick teardown, look at all the individual components, give you a glimpse of what the RGB lighting looks like, and at the end, I'll give you my final thoughts on whether or not you should actually go out and get one of these cases for yourself. So let's start off with the uh, the obvious thing, the front of this case. The front of this case is its uh, unique selling point. As you can see, it's got these kind of crystal-like diamond edges on there, all of which are perforated as well to allow plenty of airflow. So for those of you who are looking at this case and thinking, it hasn't got a mesh front, I'm not buying it. Well, you don't necessarily need an entire mesh front in order to get good airflow. This has got perforations all the way through on these side sections here, which actually tallies up with pretty much where the fans are behind as well, so airflow shouldn't be a problem. We will be doing some airflow testing this a little bit later on in another video where I will be doing a full build on this, so if you want to see how that goes, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the chime notification so you'll be notified of future video releases. So anyway, that is the front panel. There is also a, a cool little button on the front as well, which is up here. Nice little clicky button, and that is actually to control the RGB. So the RGB setup in here, you can actually connect it to a 5 volt 3 pin addressable RGB header on motherboards, but if you don't have one of those, it isn't a problem, you can control it from this button. Now the RGB lighting effects are slightly limited on this particular controller. There is the usual things like your RGB flow, your rainbow puke and individual colours. Really, I think to get the most out of it, you're probably best off connecting it to a motherboard, but again, that is entirely down to you. One thing of note in this front panel is these sections here, here and here are actually kind of like a um, like an opaque plastic, so that will let light shine through. There is actually an additional RGB strip in this front section, which is also then backed up behind it with three addressable RGB fans. Moving around to the side of the case, we've got a full-size tempered glass window with nice black surroundings as well, so it's going to hide those greasy fingerprints. Also, all the panels are held on with captive thumb screws, which is a really nice thing to see. So you can just loosen them off and they, uh, they don't want to fall off when you unscrew them. Removing the panel, very simple to do. Just push it towards the back and it comes out. And you've got a very delicate smoke tint to this glass. Absolutely perfect. Taking a look inside, you can see it's uh, pretty cavernous in there. And I'll actually put on the screen now the actual dimensions of the case and also things like what you can fit in here, fans-wise, etc. Graphics card lengths, CPU heights, all that kind of stuff. One of the things of note is the actual CPU height clearance. We've got up to 163 millimeters there. So actually pretty good. Will be suitable for most 120 mil tower coolers. But obviously, do check with your cooler first before you go and make a purchase. So starting at the bottom, we've got this nice basement section, which has got a cutout, which I'm not entirely convinced with. I have said this in many videos before. I would love to see these now blanked off because especially if you're buying a slightly more budget power supply, you don't necessarily want to see that. But obviously you can if you want to put some sort of wrap actually on the power supply as we've done in previous videos. The basement, as you can see, is actually uh, pretty well ventilated. You can, if you want to, put two 120 mil fans in that basement section. That's very easy to do. And one thing which I particularly like is the fact that they've now added a little hole there, a pass through. So when you're wiring up your graphics card, you can just run the wires from the power supply straight up through here and have a really nice, neat edge to your graphics card. I think that's a really good addition and I wish more basement sections would have that on them. Also in terms of pass-throughs and space etc, there's a big gap here at the front so you can put a 360mm radiator in this front section if you wanted to. Obviously as well you can put smaller ones in, 280s, 240s etc etc. You can as well if you want to, you can swap out the fans. There are three included 120mm fans as we said. You can swap those out if you wanted to for two 140mm fans giving you a little bit more flexibility going forward. Although I think again the real selling point of this case is the fact that 
the looks from the front and also the fact that it's got those four addressable RGB fans included in the price, which is uh, pretty incredible, really. Again, back to the pass-throughs in the back there, you've got three decent-sized pass-throughs for things like your HD audio connector, USB 2 or USB 3 connections, and towards the front there for your input and output buttons. Moving up from that, so you can see the back plate here. So this is suitable for ATX, micro ATX, and ITX motherboards, should you uh, wish to. I think ideally this is going to be for ATX boards, and you do have the extra nine pins as well, which will bring it right out further. All that's included in your accessories kit there. Also on the back, you can, if you want to, you can install a vertical mount GPU. Now they don't include the hardware for actually connecting the graphics card to your motherboard, as you'd expect, as those are normally quite expensive anyway, but certainly it is an option, although there is only two removable slots on the back, so you're gonna have to go for a relatively small card or perhaps a water-cooled card. Also, there's a really nice big cutout on the back here, so gaining access to custom coolers, that kind of stuff, really easy to do, and uh, if you're just using the AMD stock cooler, you can always get your hand around the back there and actually put a bit of pressure on it when you're installing the CPU cooler. So yeah, ticks lots of boxes there. If I tilt it back a little bit, you can see at the top there, so we've got loads and loads of room here above the motherboard. There's also three big pass-throughs, again, for things like radiators, RGB fans, should you wish to, all that kind of stuff. But certainly, mounting a radiator in the top section is going to be an absolute piece of cake. You have got space up there for a 240 or a 280 radiator. Although, if you're going for a 280 radiator, you may wish to look at things like your VRM clearance. And also, if you've got RGB RAM, check out the clearances on that also. Moving around to the back of the case, uh, nothing of particular interest here. The only thing I would really point out is the fact that we do have this extra little bit of height and ventilation at the top. So again, if you are putting a motherboard in and you're looking at putting a 240mm radiator, there is that little bit of extra room at the top there to be able to squeeze those type of components in. Otherwise, everything here is uh, really nicely rounded off, no sharp edges. You have got another 120mm addressable RGB fan on the rear here, which has a little bit of adjustment up and down, no uh, sideways movement, and you can put a 140mm fan in should you wish to. But again, because it comes with the fans included, most people, I think, are going to go with the default configuration out of the box. Moving down to the PCI Express blanking plates, sadly, these are all captive ones, apart from the very top one. I'd like to have seen just maybe an extra one of those there, so if you are putting a uh, dual slot graphics card in there, so you can take that nice and easily. Another nice feature of this is the side section here, so this bracket is removable, it's on thumb screws. Not captive ones, sadly, but not the end of the world. And this section just comes out, so again, you can put in your dual slot graphics card, connect it up there, and also this comes out of the way nice and easily to give you access to the screws for your PCI Express section. So yeah, pretty decent design, works for me. Now looking inside here, there normally would be an absolute rat's nest of cables, which I've deliberately gone ahead and tidied up a little bit, just to give you an idea of how tidy it possibly could be. So let's go through some of the connectivity we've got here. So this wire coming out the top here, this is a five volt, three pin addressable RGB coming from that rear fan. Also there is another cable coming off there, which is a three pin and also a pass through. So the idea with the kind of RGB setup and the fan controller and all that kind of stuff on this is that everything can be daisy chained. So even if you've got a really cheapo motherboard, which has maybe got only one fan header, it isn't a problem. You can connect up all the fans, actually daisy chain them all together and you can connect it up. I've chosen to actually daisy chain the front three fans as one single connection and I'm gonna leave the rear one as a single connection, I'm gonna plug that into the back of the motherboard. So I've got a little bit of flexibility, not all the fans are gonna be running at the same speed. I may wish to have the exhaust fan ramp up a little bit when the CPU gets hotter and leave the front ones on a more low profile setting to keep the noise down. But overall, I think the fans are gonna be pretty quiet anyway. So moving on to the rest of the cables, as we said, so I've bunched these all up together here. This is the, uh, the rat's nest that was the RGB connections. There's probably some B-roll I've taken of this already so you can see what it looks like out of the box. Essentially, it is, like I said, all daisy chains. So the RGB and the fans, all daisy chained together. You can, if you want to, you can use them as individuals, but because of the way that the front panel works, where that is actually hooked up as well, so you can take advantage of that control button on the front, it is all daisy chained together. Obviously, if you're feeling a little bit more confident, you can go and individually wire it and maybe purchase some kind of RGB hub or fan hub, and you can use that as well. Very, very flexible. That's one of the things I really like about this case which sadly was missing on the Teo case, which had those really nice 200 mil fans on the front. Sadly, they were static, whereas these have a full RPM control range, although it is gonna be through the VDC or from the three pin kind of PWM style connection. All you'll need to do is go into your motherboard's BIOS or fan control software and switch it from PWM into VDC, and you'll have full control throughout the voltage ranges. 
So again, cables there are bunched up together. I've put a little sticky pad on there to hold it all in place. Again, there's probably some B-roll of that. The reason I've done that is because essentially, yeah, it is an absolute mess of wiring otherwise. Another section of the wiring is obviously the front IO. So you've got your USB 3.0, you've got your HD audio and USB, and also you've got your traditional IO connections there. All of these actually are super long cables. So regardless of where your connections are, you should have an absolute ton of room there. As you can see, it goes out really far. So cable management might be a little bit more tricky trying to hide the wires, but we've got a pretty decent basement section there. So that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Well, we'll find out very shortly. So going on to some of the questions that some of you may ask if you're buying this case, how does it get powered? Well, it's actually pretty straightforward. All it is is a single SATA connection, and that will then power the RGB setup in its entirety. You can, if you want to, press and hold the button on the front and it will transfer the RGB to your motherboard. So in order to do that, there is another fly lead which goes to your motherboard to take RGB control. And if I take the front panel off now, you'll see why I've bunched this up together and not all of the cables. Reason being is because a lot of the cabling is actually in this front section itself. So the power connection, the fly lead to the three pin five volt addressable RGB, and also a kind of a daisy chain connector all come from this front panel, which I've literally got here. So I can just disconnect it at the bottom there. And then I can remove this front panel in its entirety without disturbing too much of the rest of the wiring. Before we do that, we should really take a quick look in this basement section at the bottom. So you have a removable drive cage, which has got rubber dampers, etc. You can just pull that out pretty easily. And with this drive cage, as with the previous one, so you can, if you want, put two three and a half inch drives in there, three and a half on the bottom, and then you screw the other one into the top. Or certainly you can just put a two and a half inch drive. There are little holes there for that. And then a three and a half in the bottom. Obviously you could put another two and a half in there somewhere, just using the screws and just have a single screw mount. Again, that is down to the individual. Drive-wise, I think most people now are tending to go for the M.2 drives, maybe one or two bulk storage drives, so I think that's absolutely fine. With that out of the way, you can see the uh, the full size of the basement there, and it's actually a pretty decent size. You've actually got a little bit of depth there as well, so there's about 28 mil of depth for cable management-wise, so yeah, no issues there. Should make it very, very straightforward and simple to do. Also, you've got plenty of tie-down points, so there's punch-outs pretty much in most locations, so again, making it look tidy in the back shouldn't be too much of a problem at all. Before we take the uh, front panel off and have a look at that, we'll take a look at the base section. So you've got four foam feet on there, which is nice so you don't get those black marks that you do with rubber on your desks, etc. And you also have a full length filter, which sadly isn't one of those removable ones that you can just take off on a sled. It is one of those kind of flexy ones, but actually it's not too bad. Once you actually manage to flick it out, this is never easy on camera, and then you can just pull the whole thing out give it a clean, etc., and then that exposes the area. So you've got your power supply section there, and you've got your drive cage section there. So again, ventilation for drives and good ventilation for your power supply. So now we're gonna go ahead and take off the front panel so you can take a look at seeing what's going on there. It's really easy to do, literally make sure you've disconnected your cables first of all, because otherwise you might rip a cable out. There is a grab handle underneath, which you can uh, just about get to. And then this front panel comes out. As you can see, you've got these kind of umbilical cords, which you can just pull through the opening here on the top. And then you've got the entire front panel, which can then be taken away for cleaning, dusting, etc., etc. which uh, you shouldn't really have to do a great deal of because we do have behind the front panel, this full section mesh. So this covers pretty much right to the top, to the very bottom. Uh, it's been done in white. Now I did question this at the beginning when I first took this apart and had a look inside. And I was like, why do they use white? Now there is a good reason for it actually, is because the RGB which is in the back of the front panel, which you can see here in this long strip, actually then reflects off of this white bit and actually gives you a little bit more of a glow. Obviously, if you don't want to use it, if you want more airflow, you can just remove that filter and leave it in the box or something. Personally, for me, I think probably for airflow reasons, I would leave this out. These kind of filters, the mesh filters, although they do a fantastic job for keeping the PC clean, they do restrict airflow quite a lot. And especially if you've got what are essentially relatively cheapish fans, I think it's probably best to leave that out and just rely on the front panel to remove any of those larger bits of debris. And again, because it's quite easy to remove then dusting out every now and then isn't going to be a massive problem. I suppose next is the fans themselves. So as you can see, we've got the addressable RGB rings around the outside edges. Would have been nicer to have seen these possibly with actual blades which were opaque which actually had a little bit of RGB in them also but I guess it covers two bases one it costs less which is always a good thing and also when you've got the front panel on it's kind of blocking that anyway so all you're going to see is kind of like the uh, the spill from the RGB light so yeah not a problem at all like I said if you want to you can remove these in their entirety 
and put in some 140 mil fans if you wanted to. Plenty of room for that, so you can get two of those in there very easily. You might get away with putting three in it, a very, very tight pinch. Uh, realistically, I think three 120s as it comes in the stock configuration, like I said earlier, is pretty much the way to go. So we've taken a look at the fans. Let's take a look now at the IO on the top. So on the top here, we've got a power button, you've got hard drive activity and power LEDs. Next to that, there is a reset switch, USB 2.0, microphone and headphone jacks, separate jacks, another USB 2.0, and a single solitary, very lonely looking USB 3.0. When it comes down to IO, I think realistically, most people, if you're plugging in USB 3 devices for reliability, especially if you're doing things like streaming or data transfer, the rear panel connection on your motherboard is the, probably the safer and more reliable way to go. USB 3.0 on the front is probably gonna be used maybe for just a quick transfer from a thumb drive, that kind of thing. So I think one port is absolutely fine. And again, for the other two there, maybe some kind of uh, addressable RGB mouse pad or things like that, or just plugging in things like a microphone headset, that kind of thing for USB, or maybe even things like a gamepad, that kind of thing, where it's gonna be regularly used. I think that's absolutely fine. You have also got on the top here another filter. So plenty of filters on this thing. And that is just a magnetic one, which is the usual deal. Magnetic strips around the outside edge there and taking that away reveals the mounting section here. So again, you can put a 240, 280 rad in there. There is a little bit of an offset to it, as you can probably tell, because you've got a bit of a gap there. Do check with your manufacturers and your motherboard, etc. if you're putting a 280 in there. The 240, I think it's gonna be absolutely fine again, because we've got that extra bit of height between the motherboard and the top section. I think most coolers are gonna be absolutely fine, but do double check the dimensions. If you're not entirely sure, feel free to reach out to us and I'll uh, try and measure some things up for you if there's a specific combo you're looking at putting in here. So I think that's pretty much it for the, uh, the quick teardown. The best thing to do now is to do what we usually do, stick a power supply in here and see what it looks like lit up. There we go, all lit up and ready to go out to the party. I really like the look of this, I really do. It's uh, an extremely unique design. I'll be honest with you, I've never seen a front panel quite like this before in all my years of computing. It is a very, very different look. Now, it may not be for everyone, but I think it actually does look particularly stunning. And on various angles, as the light catches it, you can see uh, how the light catches those angles and reflects them, etc. And I like how the, if you look at it straight on, you can just about see the uh, outside edge of those fan RGB bits, which kind of now makes sense when you look at those black blades on there. Again, it's absolutely pointless having those being colored because Obviously, this bit in the section in the middle is going to block all that out anyway. So, yeah, depending on what angle you're on, it really does give a, a bizarre feeling of depth because you've got that front RGB there and you've got the other RGB just slightly behind it. And again, at the back there, you can just about make out we've got that other fan which matches up the whole system all together. So, pretty much a perfect situation. You've got three fans pulling in a lot of cool air at the front there, and then you've got the one exhaust at the rear. And obviously, you can expand that if you want to with additional fans. Potentially, if you wanted to, because you've got plenty of RGB in this front anyway, you could always take out a couple of those fans, put them in the top, perhaps, maybe if you wanted to, a little bit more color on the top. Very flexible. Because the fans are kind of modular in effect, they've all got their own individual addressable RGB and three-pin header for power, for the actual speed of the fans. There's a lot of flexibility, which I really do like. The front panel, yeah, it just it does blow my mind every time. It, from every angle, it just looks slightly different and uh, gives a really nice appearance. The button on the front, I should show you how that works. So it's really simple, straightforward. You don't have to do anything. You don't even need a motherboard in there. We've just got a power supply, which is a particularly cheap one, as you can uh, see there, as we tend to use for contrast purposes. But yeah, all you need to do is power up the power supply and press the button, and then you can cycle through the lighting. So the first one, after the kind of traditional rainbow puke, is your going through the colors, etc., as you'd normally expect. And then we've got our kind of static colors. So you've got the red, green, blue, pinky, purpley, magenta. Then you've got your turquoise, or blue as is other voice name. Uh, you've got a yellow. Then you've got your base white. So if you just wanted to do a, uh, a monochrome build, that again, I think that does look particularly nice. And actually, the build that I'm kind of planning on this, there is going to be a GTX 1070 going in there, which actually has got white accent on the side. So that might fit absolutely perfectly, but we'll see how that goes in the follow-up video. Next one goes back to the uh, the Unicorn Puke, in a slightly slower version. And press again, and you get the, uh, the slightly faster Rainbow Puke. 
and then it goes back through to the standard colors again. So yeah, it's not the most fully featured RGB, but it gets the job done. Obviously, if there was a motherboard in here, you can just press and hold this for two seconds, and then you get the flash, and then that is then gonna transfer the RGB control over to your motherboard through that fly lead, like we said earlier. And if you wanna gain control back again, just press the power button, so press the RGB button, and you can cycle through again and choose the, uh, the color that suits you. So okay, I'll take the uh, front panel off now so you can see what it's like. So that is what we've got. We've got these strips here. Well, it's just one strip actually, but it's diffused into a piece of plastic. And then obviously you've got your fans there with the RGB going around them. And yeah, it's a, a pretty, pretty nice setup. And actually, it's just really simple. I like it how it looks particularly um, kind of complex in the front, but the actual build wise is gonna be an absolute piece of cake because there's tons of room, lots of easy things to use, loads of room for a graphics card, etc. Yeah, it's a, a very nice case. I'm actually surprised this how cheap it is. It 37.95, which it is on their website at the moment, getting links in the video description. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else really on the market at that price point which ticks as many boxes, has got those kind of modular type fans which you can use however you want to. I guess essentially it's going to come down to personal preference. If you like this kind of design, you like something a little bit different, then this is going to be right up your street. If you're more of a fractal type person, A, why are you watching this? But yeah, it is a little bit much for some people. I totally understand that. And there isn't a perfect case out there, otherwise... Uh, I would have seen it by now at least. So let me know what you think about this one in the comments section below. This has been the IONS Kesho, which I always want to call Kesno for some reason. But anyway, this is the Kesho. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you guys in the very next video. Thanks for watching.